Okay, in this series of videos, I'm going to demonstrate how to create sets of orthogonal fractional contrast codes. So these are, um, why would you ever use these? These come in handy um, anytime you have a categorical variable um, that you want to analyze with a continuous uh, predict or outcome variable. And you, instead of using a one-way ANOVA, um, you can use contrast codes, particularly orthogonal fractional contrast codes, to test specific questions. So I'm going to, so I have some um, example data that I will link in the description. I'll provide a, a link so you can have access to this. But um, we're going to use this as our kind of example data set, and I'm using Jamovi, which is a free statistical software. So in this scenario that we'll be using, um, or in this data set, we have, let's see how many participants actually, 76 participants. We have um, four groups. So this is going to be our categorical or a grouping variable. I just have them numbered as one, two, three, and four. And then we have our dependent variable here. So the traditional approach for maybe answering this question would be to run a one-way ANOVA. We have one independent variable with four levels, and then we have a continuous dependent variable. So in Jamovi, one thing you might want to do is just run an ANOVA to see if there are group differences. So I would just go to ANOVA up here in Jamovi. I'd bring my categorical or grouping variable over to the fixed factors box, and then I'd bring my dependent variable over into the dependent variables box. And then from here you can get um, some additional information from Jamovi if you click some of these options. So getting an kind of an overall fit test, this will make sure you get this omnibus row or overall model here. You get the effect size. Um, and then what you can see here is um, that there is a significant effect of group. So if you're assuming an alpha level of 0.05, so your p-value is 0.013. Um, but you have three degrees of freedom here. So Anytime you have a three degree of freedom test or anything above one, um, you can be you can't be any uh, specific at all about the conclusions you draw from the statistical test. All you can say is that there are mean differences somewhere. So um, the next step here would then be to run some post hoc tests. So just to try to understand what's going on here. So you would maybe go down to post hoc tests in Jamovi, bring group over. Um, I like to do the home correction for my post hoc tests, maybe get some Cohen's D's. So then you could start to then go in and try to get a look at each uh, of these mean differences. So you can maybe get a graph here to try to observe, um, get a visual of this. So you could see that group four is the highest. Okay, so. Um, so this is the traditional way to do it. And typically, you would run this um, one-way ANOVA. And then only if this omnibus test is significant, then you're kind of allowed to go in and do these post-hoc tests. And then you can start to try to find um, where the difference lies. Because all this tells you that is that there is a significant difference somewhere. So this is a traditional approach. This, this approach is fine. Um, um, but what I'm going to demonstrate in this series of videos is how to approach this question uh, using regression or the general linear model, which allows a lot more flexibility in the types of questions you can ask, um, and allows you to test your specific research question uh, right away. So rather than kind of going through this two-step process of kind of relying on this omnibus test to be significant, and then only then going in and trying to do these pairwise post-hoc comparisons, I'm going to demonstrate a way that you can address your primary research question kind of immediately. Um, so it's it's kind of a little bit more streamlined, it's, and it's a much more flexible approach. And I'll demonstrate that it's actually statistically equivalent to running a one-way ANOVA just like this. So yes, yeah, so in the next series of videos, or the next set of videos, I'm going to demonstrate how to create these contrast codes, um, how to create them specifically in Jamovi, and then I will demonstrate um, how analyses done using these contrast codes are statistically equivalent to this one-way ANOVA we've just run right here. So um, be sure to watch the, the next few videos.